What's up guys, welcome to another color grading tutorial and today we're going to be talking about export settings. I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys on Facebook and the YouTube asking me to do a tutorial how to export. So I'm going to do this tutorial right now and we're going to be working with this footage as example. It's going to be pretty much quick tutorial just on settings. So let's say that we have this footage and I'm actually going to do a little bit color grading as well since I do color grading tutorials. Anyways, this was shot on Blackmagic Design pocket camera. Uh, I've shot it like a couple years ago. We tried to imitate sort of reality TV type of thing. Uh, it was sh all shot with a Sigma 18 to 35 lens. Nothing fancy, you know, very straightforward. And before I'm going to start exporting, let me do a basic grade on it. And I'm not even going to go too fancy on it. We're just going to pretty much go straight forward. So I'm going to increase saturation by individual channels, RGB, red, green, and blue. Okay, so as you can see, it's already looking very, very nice. And another thing I can do is actually white balance a little bit because we can see that we're a little bit off. So I'm going to go to the temperature and I'm just going to dial it like that. And let's check it out before and after. Huge difference. Our skin tones actually look very nice now. Okay, looks good. And, you know, pretty much that is it. What I'm going to do for the color, color grading actually looks very nice like that. Anyways, so let's do actual delivery. Me personally, when I do color work, I don't like to finish in DaVinci Resolve. I always export and then I finalize everything in Premiere. I use Adobe Premiere pretty much for editing and finalizing. So what I like doing since this was shot, I believe in raw, I actually want to preserve as much quality as I can. So my personal settings of choice, I always like to use either MXF or QuickTime which again, I select DNX HD. And in order to preserve a lot of quality, depending on obviously your project, for example, if you have 8-bit footage, there's no reason really to output in 10-bit. But in my case, since it's raw, you know, 12-bit, I want to preserve as much information as possible. So I'm going to select 1080 to 20 megabytes, 185, 175, there's variables over here. And basically, 10 bit right over here if you have pretty much if you're doing some kind of tracking in the future or graphic design you can export in 444 i believe those uh, selections over here are 422 okay so 220 10 megabytes i mean 10 bit select this resolution that's my default frame rate i shut this at 24 so that stays in advanced settings, I don't touch anything in advanced setting. Data level set to auto, which in 99% is always basically video. Data burn, same as project. If I would be doing proxy, I could have burned, let's say, the time code or file name, you know, the scene or whatever. You can make your own custom logo or text, okay? So that's one thing. Now, second one, you have audio. I personally never deal with this. You know, I always leave the settings by default since like I mentioned earlier, I'm always finalizing in Premiere. And the file, you can select either a custom name, let's say if you're working only in one clip, or what I recommend, if all those files are gonna be going back into um, editing and you want to preserve the same name what I would do on the render instead of single clip when you have single clip selected no matter how many clips you have over here in the timeline you're gonna export only one clip but I always recommend doing individual clips that way you can relink all your files later in editing and for the file name I recommend selecting source name. So basically when you render, the file names of your video clips gonna be the same as what you imported. Again, if you're taking it back to, let's say Premiere or other editing program, that is very important. You can have a subfolder over here, render speed maximum, 
it tells you the disk usage before and after and that's pretty much it that's what I use most of the times that's my settings very straightforward uh, you know very simple the Vinci Resolve have those presets on top for different outputs I never use them I actually really don't like how the export panel looks in the Vinci Resolve now I, I used to actually like it before but pretty much when you select everything just go over here in the timeline right click make sure to highlight select all or if you want to render a single clip so right click render this clip if you want to do only one otherwise go at the bottom select all add render make sure to specify your destination and you're good to go so it's very simple if you guys have any questions please leave a comment below thank you so much for watching and make sure to subscribe i'll see you soon